And welcome sports fans to today's sports roundtable. And this is actually our kickoff for the sports season for the roundtable this season. We planned on getting underway last week, but had a lot of uh, maintenance issues that we need to take care of here at our studio last weekend. But already a week into fall sports here in Missouri, especially with high school football. We've been covering quite a bit ourselves here at YHC, among the other sports, volleyball, girls volleyball, girls softball. Uh, boys fall baseball, uh, soccer, girls tennis, a whole lot going on already here in the first week, actually first couple of weeks of school getting underway and high school athletics here in southeast Missouri. And it's been pretty exciting so far. We've brought you a couple games already. Had a game last night, Sykeston and Kennett that we brought to you. Also uh, Chaffee and Portageville online, which we'll get to in a moment. But I uh, wanted to remind and welcome everyone each Saturday morning, live at 10 a.m. right here on YHC. Replays throughout the week and even catch it archived on YHCTV.com throughout each week. So uh, trying to bring you all that's what's happening in high school sports and pretty much sports in the area uh, each week here on each Saturday on YHC. So be sure to tune in each weekend and uh, for the subsequent replays here on YHC. So it's exciting time, falls here, high school football well underway. And let's go ahead and get into some of uh, the results from last night. And first starting off with the game that we brought to you live here on YHC last night, Sykeston over Kennett in overtime, 37 to 30. And uh, quite a game between those two last night as Sykeston got the uh, win in overtime, 37 to 30, and only one possession it needed for each team. Sykes can come out on top. Uh, certainly a game of momentum. Uh, Sykes can open up with a lead. Kennett came back and got a lead of their own. Sykes and fought their way back to force it into overtime. So quite a game last night. We've got a highlight to bring to you. Let's take a look at that from last night. And starting off Sykes's opening possession, uh, two plays in from scrimmage. We see B.J. Hill here take the handoff from Nate Self. Gets caught uh, going right, swings it back left, gets the sideline all the way in for the touchdown. So a quick score for the Sykeston Bulldogs, up 7-0 early, and or 8-0 early. And, and we see here an onside kick. Sykeston recovers, and two quick offensive possessions here for Sykeston. But then Nate Self looking downfield for Ricky Scott, picked off by Ty Ellis, and he returns it back so a nice defensive effort there from Ellis but Sykes gets the ball back looking for Ricky Scott in the end zone self to Ricky Scott big night for him receiving over 100 yards receiving and takes that one in to go up 14 to nothing and here we see Patrick Maddox getting the first score for the Indians he had three rushing scores on the night and we see here a few more possessions later Maddox looking down the field picked off but uh, Trayvon Lemons coming in and uh, forcing the fumble and recovering the fumble, getting the ball back for the Indians. And we see here on the same drive, Maddox going to fake the handoff, take it, takes it in for the touchdown. And a two-point conversion here. Nice fake. Spencer Warren looking for uh, Xavier Whitaker for the uh, score there, going up 15, or it's 15 to 14 at half. Uh, the Kennedy Indians on top, and we see here a nice run by Whitaker into the end zone. Goes up 30 to 14 at that point. Then later on, we see here a touchdown by the Bulldogs, and here a big play to force it into overtime. Uh, Ricky Scott gets that two-point conversion from Self, making it 30 to 30 at that point. Now into overtime, a big run. Uh, Perry taking it in for. The touchdown, 37 to 30 at this point, and this was pretty much the end of the game here as uh, uh, Kenny couldn't get anything going on the overtime possession. Maddox takes a sack, and here in the last play of the game, just desperation time. I think it was fourth and 35 at this point, and uh, just could not come up with a first down and into that game last night. And Kenneth Sykeston coming back, a uh, great comeback effort by both teams, actually. Sykeston got up 14 to nothing early. And uh, Kennett scored 30 unanswered points from that point to make it 30 to 14. And then Sykeson come back late in the fourth quarter. And a big play as we saw there, that two-point conversion rollout. Self hit <clears throat> Ricky Scott in the end zone for that two-point conversion with a minute and a half to go in the game. 
to make it tight at 30 to 30 to force overtime. So uh, big time plays for both teams last night. Just a game of momentum last night, game of runs, and both teams made their made their effort. And Sykes had just come out, made a few more plays late in that overtime to get the win. And Sykes moves on to 2-0 and on the year. Kennett goes to 1-1. One and one. And we'll talk more about uh, uh, that game in our next segment. So we'll take a look at some more games from the area last night. And a game that we also brought to you live on YHCTV.com. Chaffee defeated Portageville in overtime as well. And that one went 38-32 to in overtime. Portageville got the ball down on uh, the one-yard line and just could not punch it in in overtime to tie it and or potentially win it with an extra point. And overtime loss for the Portageville Bulldogs last night. Chaffee moves up to 2-0 on the season after last night. And in other games, Poplar Bluff defeating Dexter, not in overtime, little uh, mistake there, but uh, uh, yeah, um, Poplar Bluff over uh, Dexter over in Poplar Bluff last night. And that was 35 to 12. Poplar Bluff over Dexter. Not a whole lot of yardage last night. Uh, Poplar Bluff put up about 253 yards of offense. Dexter had about 130 yards, I believe. So not a whole lot of yardage. Some points put up. Poplar Bluff scored a lot of their points early. Dexter got a fumble recovery. Uh, Trey McDonald re uh, returned a fumble recovery for a touchdown. So uh, not a whole lot of yardage last night, even between both teams. Both had nine first downs for the game. So, um, you know, it, Papa Bluff get, did get an early lead, 28 to nothing at half. So probably uh, put on the brakes at that point through the game. But, uh, you know, Papa Bluff moves to 2-0 and on the year. Dexter at 1-1 one and one after their week one victory over St. Genevieve. And moving on, uh, take a look at some other games from the area. Scott City over St. Vincent, 21-3. Also, Perryville over St. Pius X out of Festa, 7-0. Only a touchdown in that game. Also, we've got Thayer over New Madrid County Central, 54-24. Kelly over Crystal City, 27-6. Kelly with that uh, recently launched program uh, about three years ago. Uh, getting a win last night, uh, certainly big for the Kelly Hawks in that young program. And East Prairie over Jefferson out of Festus, 46-45, to all the way down to the end. A missed field goal attempt late for Jefferson. Got East Prairie that win last night in Week 2. And also Cape Central over St. Charles West, 28-19. to Cape Central getting a Week 2 victory after a big Week 1 victory last week over Mountain View Liberty, going to 2-0. and Lindbergh over Jackson, big 45-19. to Jackson uh, taking one on the chin last night to Lindbergh. Also, Haytai over Charleston. Haytai certainly a uh, big win last week over Thayer and defeating Charleston sizably last night, 62-15. to Look out for these Haytai Indians. We'll talk a little bit more about them in our next segment. Crothersville over Malden. Big district matchup, a big rivalry between these two schools. Crothersville uh, soundly defeats Malden 33-7. to And... Uh, Crothersville finally gets over Malden, their first uh, defeat of them in quite some time. And Malden's first lo regular season loss at the Swamp in Malden since 2013, I believe it is. So Malden having a great run in the regular season. A couple of regular, uh, about three or four undefeated regular seasons in a row. And that comes to an end last night with a loss to Crothersville. And these two teams battled last year in both games, regular season and the district championship. And new coming into this year, Crothersville was uh, going to be certainly motivated to overtake Mullen in that district this year and certainly got over that hump last night with a victory over Mullen at the Swamp. And, uh, you know, we'll probably see these two teams later in the year again come district tournament time. But uh, that's one thing for certain. Crothersville will have the edge over Mullen for home field advantage come district time uh, later on this season. So... Uh, big, big game there. Always, uh, always look forward to that one in week two, Crothersville and Malden, and it certainly lived up last night. And we'll talk more about that a little later. Also from last night, uh, take a look at some high school softball yesterday. Poplar Bluff over Incarnate Word, eight to four. 
And also Van Buren over Donovan, 8 to 4. And also another one we've got Kelly over Neelyville, 12 to 3. And in high school volleyball last night, Woodland, uh, the Woodland volleyball team taking the Woodland Invitational Tournament. And they defeated uh, Leopold in, in three games to two. Also, Leopold defeated Oak Ridge three games to two. Woodland over uh, Leopold three games to two. And uh, Saxon Lutheran over Oak Ridge three games to two. Advance over Richland two games to none in uh, the Stoddard County Conference. And moving to some high school baseball. High school baseball, Twin Rivers over Naylor. Six to five, Clearwater over Neelyville, five to four, Oran over South Pemiscot, eleven to one, and then Bernie versus Gideon and Risco. Gideon and Risco combining game, uh, combining teams, and Bernie defeated them yesterday in six innings, eleven to nothing, and Blake Beecham getting the win for the Bernie Mules. Mikey Suter with three RBIs, including a home run, and Wyatt Barnett uh, with a two-run home run as well. Uh, for the Bernie Mules and Bernie Mules out to a 2 and 0 record so far this fall in high school baseball. And uh, speaking of the games that we did uh, last night, Sykeston and Kennett replaying today here Saturday at noon. You can watch that replay Saturday at noon and Sunday at 4. Saturday at noon and Sunday at 4 between Sykeston and Kennett. Watch that replay. Very good game going both ways, and I uh, got a chance to watch that today, Saturday at noon and Sunday at 4. Also, you can catch it online. We'll probably have it up on our website, yhctv.com, by Sunday on the website. So look forward to that, and a really good game from last night to check out here on YHC. And also, we broadcast a game as well. We did uh, two broad live broadcasts on our website. Uh, we had Chaffee and Portageville live on our website at YHCTV.com last night. And Ron Riddle and Jamie Frakes did a great job bringing that play-by-play -play action last night. And you can catch that replay Sunday at 7, uh, Tuesday at 6.30. Also, we're going to have it Monday morning at 9 a.m. So Sunday at 7, Monday at 9 a.m., and Tuesday at 6.30, that Chaffee and Portageville broadcast. So look forward to that. Also, this weekend, we'll probably have that available uh, Sunday as well on the website at YHCTV.com. And we're going to take our first break and be back with a little bit of a recap of those high school football games last night, get more into depth of what happened in those games last night throughout the area. So we're going to take our first break and be right back. At Ag Explore, we're farmers too. So we know that farming's never been a nine to five job. Just like the farmer, we work overtime to bring you whatever it takes. Solutions like Enzone help you retain 47% more nitrogen with an overall average increase of 12 bushels per acre. Imagine what Enzone can do for you. Ag Explore. At New Wave, we're proud to call the communities we serve our home. Our customers tell us having a local office is important to them. That's why we maintain dozens of local offices and employ over 500 skilled employees, all focused on delivering the best customer experience. We don't just connect communities, we connect to our communities, helping support the schools, organizations, and events that support all of us. Thank you for choosing New Wave Communications, your local provider of internet, TV, and phone. And welcome back, and now take a look at some of the games from last night in high school football. Give a little recap of what happened in those games. And speaking of the Sykeston and Kennett games, Sykeston rallied late in the fourth quarter to edge Kennett 37-30 in that overtime victory. And big performances last night, especially from Ricky Scott. I believe he had eight or nine receptions for 114 yards receiving. And uh, big, he had a touchdown reception, also that big two-point conversion uh, two-point conversion late in the game to tie it up at 30 to eventually force overtime. So big performance by Ricky Scott last night. Also, uh, Matthew Perry and B.J. Hill did a uh, great job running the ball as well. Um, so, you know, those guys really, you know, we saw B.J. Hill in that early uh, possession take it all the way to the end zone over 50 yards 
uh, two plays into the game, and Matthew Perry come up with that big run in overtime to give them the 36-30 uh, to 30 score with the eventual point after. So uh, big performances out of those three guys last night, Ricky Scott, Matthew Perry, and B.J. Hill. So Sykes moves to 2-0, and two overtime victories over Charleston and Kennett. That's what it took to make it, but uh, uh, big-time performances from those guys last night. On the Kennett side, you know, Patrick Maddox had three touchdowns, three for uh, rushing touchdowns, and a really good game by him. Xavier, McDan- or Xavier Whitaker had a great, great game running the ball as well. And, um, you know, the receiving game started, you know, it's a, a struggle coming along. I tell you, that Spencer Warren kid, um, or I don't know if I got that wrong, uh, the, the Spence kid uh, got injured on a passing play. What to, uh, he really got hit hard by a defensive back after that catch down the field. And, uh, you know, it d- didn't look good last night. Hopefully it comes out in his favor, but boy, it really looked bad, and I, I think Coach Joel Wyatt said in uh, his post-game, post-game comments, it didn't look good as it happened there on the field, so hopefully he can come back, but, uh, you know, the Kennett, you know, that passing game was, uh, you know, they, they were trying to go to it late in that game last night, just could not get anything down the field, but uh, we'll probably see that develop as the season goes on, but uh, you know, that really hurt the, the Spencer kid. Getting, uh, getting hit and being out late in that game when they needed him in the passing game uh, made it tough. But also a big uh, performance, Ty Ellis had a big game, had an interception and a couple big tackles and really defended, you know, Ricky Scott, you know, did get some plays down the field, but there were some plays that, some big plays down the field that Ty Ellis uh, disrupted and really batted some passes down that were deep down the field. One was a touchdown, looked like he batted that down. Uh, right as Ricky Scott was able uh, to get under it. So pretty pretty good effort by Ty Ellis in the backfield. He had his hands full, Ricky Scott down the field. But he had some, he had some big plays. And uh, one, one big guy last night we expected a lot from this year, uh, Trayvon Lemons had a big game. Uh, we didn't show one highlight. It was a fourth and one when Kennett was trying to get the momentum back. And they, he stuffed, uh, I think it was either Hill or Perry at that point. And, in the game fourth and one just come up big with a stop we saw the you know the tackle he made and then recovered the fumble and he come up with a bunch of big tackles last night on defense and that's one kid to look out for this year Trayvon Lemons he's going to be a beast and you'll be seeing a lot of highlights from him uh, throughout this year he's a great player and does a great job along the defensive line and uh, we'll be looking for uh, more highlights from him going forward and uh, let's move on to some other games from the area. Crothersville uh, surges past Malden, 33-7. to And Charles Galladay, Crothersville quarterback, had a great game. 383 total yards rushing and passing. Had over 200, uh, 200 yards passing, including about 90 yards rushing. And uh, I'll tell you, he's, he, he, he did it all last night for the Crothersville Tigers. Looked really good, and also they got a lot of weapons on that team uh, for Crowsville. Chris Smith comes to mind um, on offense, and Crowsville's going to be a tough team to beat, as they showed last night. They're going to have the upper hand in that Class 2 district this year, it looks like. It looks like uh, the district will go through Crowsville because it always comes down to Crowsville Malden in that district, and now that Crowsville beat Malden head-to-head, uh, it looks like Crowsville is going to be in that driver's seat for home field advantage in the district playoff this year. So, uh, you know, Crowsville's back. You know, they, you know, Crowsville was the dominant team, you know, back to those Daryl Monroe days. And Malden over the last handful of years have been dominant. And it looks like Crowsville's made their way back uh, in that district as they were last year. You know, them and Malden had some battles all the way to the end in both games last year. But certainly Crowsville's taking that extra step forward. And it looks like they're going to make a run this year for that district title. So we'll see what happens. But Crowsville looking awfully good. Dominant victory last week over Portageville. And a dominant victory over Malden last night. So we'll see what happens. But Malden's still a good team. New coaching this year. That's that's one thing. That's a, it's a change for the Green Wave this year. Joel Wyatt moves on to Kennett. And uh, Kevin Collier taking over. Uh, head coach for the Green Wave this year. So... Uh, a little new offense as well. Charlie Vickery coming down from uh, Chaffee, joining the staff for the offense. So you don't know if there's just uh, you know some continuity trying to get that worked out early in the season. Well, we'll see. But certainly Malden, very talented team coming back. 
once again this year. Trey Stevenson had a big game. He had 100, over 100 yards rushing, made up pretty much over half of the offense from the Green Wave. Turnovers was a big deal, too. Six turnovers in the game for the Green Wave, including four interceptions. So, uh, you know, that, that had a lot to do with the loss by the Green Wave last night. So uh, we'll see. We'll see both these teams uh, have very good seasons once again this year, and we'll be seeing them down the road here on YHC as well. So look out for both those teams. But Crothersville right now in the driver's seat in the district uh, looking for that home field advantage. And take a look at Haytai. Haytai rolling up Charleston in that win last night over 500 yards, 558 total yards uh, from the Haytai Indians as they route Charleston 50, or, yeah, 50, 62, 62 to 15. And boy, Haytai is a team to look out for this year playing in Class 1. Uh, we might see them go quite far this year. They've got a lot of playmakers. Uh, Gravante Moore, quarterback, does it all. Devontae Robinson also uh, on offense. And this team that's got so many weapons across the board. And we can see them go quite far this year. They made it to the, what was that, the quarterfinals last year in the state tournament. Lost to Valley Catholic. But they were at without their best player last year. That goes, uh, you know, that, you know, that certainly makes a difference. So Haytai bringing back a strong club this year. We can certainly see them uh, make some noise this year in high school football, especially at the Class One level. So be looking to see how that plays out this year for the Haytai Indians. And they got a big win last year with Thayer. I mean, they really thumped Thayer, and Thayer's a really good team out of Class One as well. But uh, this Haytai Indian team. Look out, because they've got the weapons and they're they're rolling up the scoreboard right now over the last or over the first two weeks here in southeast Missouri. So we'll be keeping our eye on the Indians going forward. And uh, now let's take a look at our broadcast schedule for you to look forward to here on YHC. Taking a look at this Friday's game, we've got New Madrid County Central and Dexter, and that'll be a TV and webcast here on YHC. You can catch that here on Channel 21 on New Wave Cable as well as YHCTV.com. That'll be Friday night and also Saturday. We've got a Saturday afternoon game at 2 o'clock in Kennett. That will be Carnahan and Kennett uh, next Saturday afternoon for uh, live TV and webcast for next Saturday. Also uh, on there, we don't have it on there for next Friday night, we have Pickett Mohawk football down in Arkansas. They've got their home opener Actually, their season opener, taking on Hazen at Parker Field and Pickett will be there on hand for that as well next Friday night on September 1st. And uh, that will be a webcast available on YHCTV.com. So two games next Friday night, New Matter County Central and Dexter. You can catch here on Channel 21 and YHCTV.com and Hazen and Pickett that night as well, which will only be available live on our website at YHCTV.com. And then Saturday, Carnahan and Kennett. Uh, there for uh, next Saturday. So uh, quite a bit of football next weekend here for us on YHC. So looking forward to that. Big games uh, for next weekend here on YHC. And we're going to uh, take another break. Actually, let's go ahead and uh, go into um, – the football state rankings. Actually, we're going to take a break and we'll be back with those football state rankings. That's uh, coming up. For more than 75 years, the law firm of Crow, Reynolds, Shetley, McVay, and Shear LLP has served the legal needs of Southeast Missouri. Located at 308 First Street in Kennett, Crow, Reynolds, Shetley, McVay, and Shear LLP is a full service law firm providing representation in a wide range of areas such as personal injury, workers' compensation, family law, criminal law, probate, business, and estate planning. For all your legal needs, call Crow, Reynolds, Shetley, McVeigh, and Shear LLP at 573-888-4664. And I'll take a look at those football state rankings coming into this week. It won't reflect last night's games, but coming into this week, starting off with Class 1 football state rankings for Missouri. Hamilton Penny with a record of 1-0. and oh, I believe they won, a, uh, won the state championship last year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Valley Catholic coming in at number 2, coming into this week at 1-0. Oh. Monroe City at 3-4. Marceline. 
five Lincoln, and six Haytai. Haytai jumped into those rankings after being unranked. Going into the first week, they had a dominant victory over Thayer, which you'll see down the list there at number nine. So a dominant victory over Thayer jumps them into the top ten all the way up to number six going into uh, last night. So we'll probably see them in the top five probably pretty soon as uh, the Haytai Indians have been very dominant early on. And number seven, Western, eight, Pierce City, nine, Thayer, and ten, Lockwood. So two local teams here in southeast Missouri, Thayer and Haytai. They're in the state rankings in class one into this week. And uh, class two, Lamar, what the five or six time defending state champions. No surprise there at number one, uh, coming in at one and oh into last night. Two, Trinity, three, Mountain Grove, four, Lutheran North. 5, Ava, 6, Centralia, 7, South Callaway, 8, Cardinal Ritter, 9, Mountain View Liberty, and 10, Brentwood. And uh, no local teams in there so far. Mountain View a little further out west there at number 9, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see Crothersville there in the mix here in the next few weeks as they've, as they've been dominant over the first couple of weeks, and that's usually what it takes. Uh, Crothersville's been kind of out of the mix in the state rankings the last few years, but you know a few dominant wins will certainly get uh, the sports writer's attention, so we'll see if uh, Crothersville cracks that top 10 in the next few weeks. And in Class 3, uh, McClure North, Berkeley, or excuse me, McClure South, Berkeley at number 1, 2, Maryville, 3, Blair Oaks, 4, Miller Career Academy, 5, Center, 6, Park Hill Central, 7, Southern Boone, 8, Manette, 9, Mount Vernon, and 10, Osage. Class four, Web City. Uh, Web City uh, didn't win the state championship last year, believe it or not. Actually, it was two years in a row they haven't won it. They lost the state championship a couple years ago and didn't even make the state championship last year. Still find themselves at number one uh, in class four going into this year, and they've, they've uh, hung on to it for a week already. And two, Hannibal. Three, Harrisonville. Four, Carl Junction. Five, uh, Country Day. Six, Kearney, seven, Parkway Central, eight, Camden, nine, Raytown South, and ten, Ladue. And in Class 5, Vianney at number one, uh, the state champions, defending state champions in Class 5 at number one, two, Fort Zumwalt North, three, Staley, four, Battle, five, Liberty, six, Glendale, seven, Fort Osage, eight, Chaminade, nine, Ozark, and ten, Park Hill South. And those are your football state rankings coming in to this week. So uh, seeing a couple teams in there, Thayer and Haytai, they're in class one. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Crothersville there in the mix in the state rankings uh, here in the next few weeks. Wouldn't be surprised at all. So uh, some really good teams here in the local area. I know Crothersville and Haytai will be playing each other later on in the year. That'll certainly be a fun game to see and how that plays out. But uh Two very good teams there in Pemiscott County so far this year, Haytai and Crothersville in Class 1 and 2. So uh, we'll see how that plays out as they meet up later on in the season. But uh, we'll be looking forward to Week 3 coming ahead, and we've got some games to bring to you. So we'll be looking forward to that as well. So uh, very exciting time uh, early on this season. So we're going to take a quick break and give you a little update on some college football taking place getting underway with the college football season, taking a look at our local teams a bit. Also, the big super fight this evening, as well as um, a look ahead to some other sports as well. So we'll be right back. When you connect with high-speed internet from New Wave Communications, you unlock all kinds of possibilities. More gaming, more streaming and viewing, more ways to keep in touch, more ways to learn, and best of all, Adding New Wave Internet to your current television package won't cost a lot more thanks to New Wave's bundle discounts. In fact, if you're paying another provider for Internet, switching to New Wave will probably save you money. Call or go to newwavecom.com to find more ways to bundle and save. And welcome back and taking a look at some college football. And we're getting underway actually today. I think there's a game today. I believe, uh, is it Stanford taking on Rice? I think I might have that right. Just a game or two that's taking place this weekend. Going to be getting started this week, I believe, uh, Thursday. There's some games on Thursday. And uh, throughout the week getting set for 
Saturday, which a lot of games will be taking place Saturday. Our local teams uh, going to be playing this next weekend, Saturday. Uh, Saturday at 6 p.m., SEMO is at Kansas, taking on the Big 12 Kansas Jayhawks. You can catch that on ESPN3 uh, online or on your smartphone at 6 o'clock next Saturday, as well as Arkansas State taking on Nebraska. Tough uh, road opponent in the Big 10, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, at 7 p.m. next Saturday on the Big 10 Network. Uh, catch that on the Big 10 Network, the Arkansas State Red Wolves taking on the Nebraska Cornhuskers. So two very tough opponents for SEMO and Arkansas State getting their season underway next weekend in college football. So we'll be looking forward to seeing how that plays out for our local teams. But uh, the college football season getting underway this week and especially over the weekend. So exciting time as football is getting to, about to get ready in full swing here in just a few weeks. Uh, next weekend, we'll be kicking off college football, and then the following weekend, NFL football. So it's all about to get underway uh, here in just a few weeks in uh, football from the high school, college, and professional ranks. So we'll be looking forward to getting all three underway. I'm a big football fan. I love it all. I love the, the high school. I'm starting to get into the college more. You know, I, I typically follow the, the local teams mostly, but, uh, you know, not, a, not as big a college football fan as high school and professional. This college football playoff has got me a lot more uh, intrigued and certainly interested towards the end of the season, how it all plays out. So the college playoff is a great thing and uh, looking forward to seeing how that plays out this year. And we've had some great college football seasons. Alabama and Clemson, those last two national title games, Certainly been exciting, so Alabama just geared up once again. Number one ranked team coming in once again, so uh, we'll be we'll be exciting to see how it plays out once again this year in college football. And uh, uh, the professional ranks will be getting underway in a couple weeks as well. Big fan of the NFL, so certainly looking forward to that. And uh, ready to get all three to go. I like I love watching you know high school football on Friday. College on Saturday, a couple games I'm, you know, really kind of looking forward to watching, and then Sunday, watching it all day Sunday. So I want my, I want my weekend football, <laughs> and it's almost here. So we'll be looking forward to that, uh, getting all three underway in just a few weeks. And big fight tonight, super fight, Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor, big fight tonight, and uh, going to shell out some money to watch it, but a uh, big fight tonight, super fight, mixing MMA and boxing, only under boxing rules, though. But uh, yeah, you know, it's, I've been thinking about this for a while, not really sure how it's going to play out. I just There's two different endings I see. I see a kind of a pillow fight where Floyd Mayweather wins in unanimous decision on points, and it's going to be a very disappointing uh, fight if that – ends up that way. If it goes the distance, I think it's going to be disappointing because I don't think it can really go the distance unless Floyd Mayweather just kind of plays along, just punches his way to victory and um, just, you know, takes his money and then moves on. But Conor McGregor, I think he's just going to be overwhelmed uh, with the counter punching, especially that Floyd Mayweather is known for. It's going to be tough for him to land any punches and it could, uh, it could get bad for him. I really do. I really think so. And um, I don't think Floyd Mayweather is just going to really hurt him. I don't think he's going to hurt him bad, but I think it's going to be, you can tell he's just going to dance around him and just, you know, jab, 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 and just, you know, just pelt him with jabs all night. I think that's what's going to happen. But I'd like to see Floyd Mayweather step it up since this is possibly his last fight of his career, going for 50-0 and 0, that's never been done. I'd like him to step it up for this event, make it a spectacle, and make it something to remember. And, you know, if, if Floyd Mayweather's, you know, confident that, you know, Conor McGregor does not belong in the ring with him, I'd like to see him put him on the mat. I'd like to see him be aggressive and put him down, put him out. You know, we don't see that from Floyd Mayweather. We see him acquiring the, you know, piling up the punches, getting the unanimous decision in the end. But, you know, if, Conor McGregor doesn't belong in the ring with him as he says he does. He needs to prove it. He needs to put him down and put put McGregor away and win decisively. That's what I'd like to see. But McGregor, he's got to be aggressive. You know, he's got to take it to him. 
and try to land some punches. And well, that's one thing. Conor McGregor could really make history if he could land some punches and even put him on the ground. If he even knocked Floyd Mayweather down, he could come away saying, hey, I'm, I'm the winner of this fight. I put him on the ground, which no one else can. So there's a lot of different layers to this fight that could come about and how it could end. But uh, like, I, like I said, I expect Floyd to control the fight, but you know, I, I want him to put him away just because I think Floyd has that talent, but I, I think he just kind of gets in that mode of just punching his way to victory. So it could be very disappointing, and one extreme could be very disappointing, very boring, disappointing, uh, certainly not living up to the hype. And then on the very other extreme, we could see sports history made that will probably never, ever be duplicated if Floyd, or if Conor McGregor could pull off this win. So uh, certainly, certainly – very different outcomes that could come up tonight. Very different storylines, especially. So we'll see, but I fully expect Mayweather to handle it and win at least in a unanimous, overwhelming decision and possibly with a stoppage. If he just pelts him with punches and Connor just can't handle him, you know, they might step in and call it. So we'll see what happens, but should be should be a spectacle. Certainly the hype has been behind this fight and hopefully it lives up to it in the very least. So we'll see what happens tonight in that super fight with Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor. And the Cardinals still there in the mix, uh, trying to fight their way into playoff contention as uh, taking a look at uh, what's going on for the weekend for the Cardinals. Uh, Friday night, uh, Friday night, the Cardinals uh, took on the Tampa Bay Rays and lost 7-3 to three in that game last night. Disappointing as they need all the wins they can get now as they're uh, behind in the standings. And uh, six fifteen start tonight for the Cardinals against the Rays. And it's going to be Mike Leake taking on Blake Snell for the Tampa Bay Rays. And take a look at the standings, uh, the divisional standings. Cardinals four and a half back of the Cubs. And Milwaukee's three back of the Cubs, so a game and a half back of second place behind the Milwaukee Brewers. So look like the Chicago Cubs lost as well last night to uh, for the Cardinals to keep pace with four and a half back. And in the wild card race, the Cardinals are five games back of the second wild card spot. So the wild card spots uh, still, you know, it's becoming more possible for the Cardinals to get that second wild card spot as Arizona and Colorado have struggled here in the last month, uh, making it possible for the Cardinals to get that spot. But Miami and Milwaukee is right in front of them there in the wild card standings as well. So the Cardinals still fighting, but uh, you know, they're going to have to come up with their best balls. They've got about 33, 34 games left in the season. Got to make a run and make it start making it now because you know trying to depend on the – Defending world champion Chicago Cubs to stumble down the down the stretch. Uh, that's asking a lot. So Cardinals got to start putting a, putting a run together here for September. And that's all we got for you for today as we brought back the roundtable today and look forward to bringing it back to you each Saturday here on YHC and YHCTV.com. So be sure to catch that each week right here on YHC and that'll do it for us today and we appreciate you for tuning in as always and we'll see you right back here with us next Saturday and until then I'm Tyler Wagner have yourself a great week